right. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We have some folks online. We have some folks in the center. So excited for this uh, program today. My name is Dr. Kyrie Williams. I'm the director for our True Racial Healing and Transformation Campus Center here at ACC. If you are online and not with us, we are in the, on the Highland Campus, and this is a new space and resource for the whole institution. Uh, hopefully, you'll be able to join us at some point in our physical space. Um, today, uh, greetings. And today, we are um, we are starting our inaugural um, uh, ACC TRHT Fall Speaker Series. Our goal with this initiative is to highlight the local lo local change makers who, who are both um, within the internal ACC community and our greater Austin community who are doing some positive things to impact um, us being more equitable and just for all. Uh, so people that are making our spaces better for all of us, uh, people that are making the change that we talk about. Uh, today, um, and in, in addition to the myriad of programming opportunities and training opportunities, our center hosts, uh, we will highlight one local hero a month uh, in a sit down conversation because we believe this is a great, uh, it's great value. And, uh, you know, there's some folks on the national stage that are doing some great things. We believe there's also some, some great, great value in folks that are right here in our own backyard that are doing the work um, that are tangible, that you can see, that you can feel, that you can touch and really relate to. Um, so I'm excited about the speaker today because it's one of our very, very own. Uh, it's someone I've, I've grown to know. Um, I, I, um, I heard her name and I heard about her work before I met her. And I heard it in a variety of different spaces. And I was like, I have to meet this person. And when I met her, I was like, I get it now. Um, she is just a phenomenal human being. And she's one of the um, reasons I love doing this work because I believe that the though I may professional in this work, I believe, you know, students, student leaders um, can really have an impact on us. And she's been a true inspiration to me um, already. So I, I thank her for that. Uh, so oh, without further ado, I'm going to just read her um, introduction and I'll get her up here so you all can hear from her. Uh, Kay Trent is on a mission to change the world. Um, she's a psychology and project management student here um, who will be graduating in the spring of 2023. So we'll be losing her soon, uh, but that's a good thing. Uh, outside of our heavy involvement within the college, which includes being a student body president, vice president of the Pride Club, and outreach and marketing for Brass, uh, she sits on the Student Advisory Council that is composed of other community college students from across the state. The council writes recommendations for policies to be passed by lawmakers of Texas uh, for greater good of community colleges in the state of Texas. Uh, so, I mean, she's making some some inroads and strides um, here at ACC, also in the Austin community and across the state, like truly around the work. Uh, prior to coming to ACC, Kay was a full-time educator in K-12 uh, and a CASA volunteer. I'm sure she'll share more about that because I want to hear more about that. And in the near future, Kay aspires to not only go to Texas law, but also to become a clinician uh, to practice cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, without further ado, let's give it up for Ms. Kay Trent. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Cool. Can people at home hear me? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Holden. Thank you, Celia. Okay, cool. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing well. I'm excited and nervous because I do not like public speaking, but here I am. <laughs> you're, you're so good. I know, I know, I know, but I got to be real. Like, I don't like it. Getting social anxiety, but I'm excited okay. to do it because okay, I well, see just, all my people here. Just act like it's, it's this is family. <laughs> I can tell this is family. Oh, yeah, that's my psychology yeah. club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, my mom, my people all here. So we're just, good. We're good. act like you are among family <laughs> very much so awesome. thank you for having awesome. me well thank you for your bio and, and thank you for just the many ways that you are making changes to the acc and abroad even broader um can you begin by telling us just a little bit about like who you who you are and what brought you to acc what brought you into the work you Ooh, that is a very big loaded question mm -hmm. um so I'd have to say it started with my grandmother. You know, my grandmother was an educator. She taught in schools before they were integrated and very much had to always stand up when white people came into the classroom, but was very, very heavily involved in her community, her church. She loved everybody. She took me everywhere with her. I don't know how she kept up with her schedule, but she would say the same about me now. Um, and so, you know, that was like over 40 years ago. And so I kind of fell into it as an educator myself. I did first grade, second grade in New Orleans and six years ESL uh, pre-K in San Antonio. And so you just see all the things, uh, you know, the different levels of people that need you, you know, in education. And 
you know, I just kind of fell into the work and, you know, I started volunteering with my grandmother before I even got, was able to walk. She had me in the church with her, like wrapped around all the things. So it just kind of came natural. But what really fueled it is being in education and being in a space where I was just hitting walls because I'm a butterfly. You can't cage me. Everybody knows me. I'm about to say what I want. I'm going to tell you how I feel. Um, but also education wasn't prepared to make the changes that I was seeking. And so I had to make the decision to either continue to follow under something that I didn't believe in or to, con- or to leave and start somewhere else. So I literally packed up my life in San Antonio, sold everything in my house and moved to Austin to come to ACC. Uh, to be real, I couldn't afford that a district. And so moving into the district made it cheaper for me to come to school. And so I've been here ever since. Um, and I just... I'm just grateful for the work that I can do because of y'all, like, because if ACC didn't exist, there would be no k trend amongst ACC. So here I am. We would just be doing great things. <laughs> okay. So, so that's, I mean, I understand a little bit more, more about your passion for education, um, but what, like, you're not a student that comes to campus, <laughs> goes to class and goes back home. Like, what inspires you to get even, like, more heavily involved in doing some of the work you're doing outside of what you do in the classroom? So much like the ACC population, I have already done school, right? We've been to school before. We didn't know what we were doing. I'm a first gen. Like nobody ever told me that, hey, you should be involved in extracurricular. You should do these things. You should connect to the community and all this stuff. I was just trying to get in and out. But I was also so frustrated because I was already so far not left behind, but also just amongst the community of people where I didn't look like them and fit into the stigma. And so nobody cared about me, right? I went to Catholic private school and so you think oh you're paying for your education but I was drowning absolutely drowning and so we see people of color especially black children in these systems they don't do well they don't thrive in K through 12 it is a known fact it is not a pretend statement and so then once they get to higher ed they're thriving right but because there's people there that look like them they feel free to do all the things that they want to do and so a lot of that you know, I didn't have a good first experience per se in my first go round in college. And so now when I came back, I made a commitment to myself to do better and to want to be involved and just starting slowly. I think the first thing I did was philosophy club at ACC. And then I was like, Ooh, I can do more. And just, I can do more and I can do more. And I just, I thrived on that because it gave me so much passion and I was able to connect to people that kind of share the same story, right? ACC's demographic is like 20, 25 plus a mom, you know, they've lived life, have things going on. And so it allowed me to connect to people that kind of share the same story without feeling shame and guilt about not having maybe done it, you know, 12 years ago. I'm 30, like I'm an older student at ACC, but very much most people really are. So it's been great. And I hope that people continue to know that they can do whatever they want to. There's no time frame, no time commitment. Just do what you want when you want. So what would you say to someone that says, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a student, but I'm busy outside. I have I have I have a life outside of ACC. I have family. I have a job. I don't have the time, but I want to make a difference it's like you. But I don't know how to navigate that. I think the fact that they even had that conversation with me is them wanting to. They're starting to have that ability to be able to be involved, right? That one question of how do I do it? Now you've already opened up the door to get the information, right? We have to know what questions to ask in order to get to where we're going. But when we don't, that is where we, you know, start to feel like we're falling short or we don't know what we're doing. But in the meantime, if you're already asking me, like, how can I? So let me show you how, right? And so (laughs) it's just been an amazing thing. And I'm just kind of paying my experiences forward to everybody else that I've kind of met along the way. And what if someone was to say, you know, I'm not a a a affluent speaker like you. Um, I, I don't necessarily see myself at the board of trustees meeting, you know, fighting the power. Um, I'm not on the. I don't want to be. I don't want to be in the front lines marching, but I do want to do something. So a, a lot of people, I tell them, you know, like let me be your voice, right? Because that's why we do this work. That's why we put ourselves on the front line because there are people that don't feel comfortable speaking, but I'm like, what are your needs? You have to express them to somebody. And so with that, it's literally what I did in the classroom, building that trust first, because nobody cares what you know until they know that you care. And so it's just building that trust and, you know, consistently showing up for them and giving them somebody to, you know, lean on, to reach on. We have 71,000 students in 11 locations. Like how does anybody connect across this college? It is almost impossible to do that. But here we are, K Trent is everywhere somehow. And at 11 locations. And so it's just giving them the space to be heard and be seen, but also like 
what can I do to help raise your voice if you don't feel comfortable in a certain space? Because it's true, right? People have these ideas about things and they may not feel comfortable sharing, but I'm like, I have no shame in my game. I will absolutely fight for y'all openly and honestly all the time. So it's just letting them know that I, that people are here for them and to utilize their community, especially peers. And so it's just been, it's been amazing. You, you said a quote or, or at least it was a quote for me. Can you, can you give it to us more time? Uh, I think it's people don't care what you know until they know that you care. Is that what I said? That sparked your interest? Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about that. I learned that when I was in sales. <laughs> 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 Um, fun fact, I have worked many jobs. I've lived many lives. Uh, I was working at Ashley Furniture in the front office, you know, answering the phone. I don't look like I have a desk job. That's not a K-Trent thing. But before K-Trent was K-Trent, had to pay the bills, do all the things. And I was just in there. And it was just like one of the sales pitches that the best salesperson had in there. Now, his soul wasn't great, but his mouth was great. So, <laughs> so he got a lot of, you know, a lot of things accomplished, but I took that and I flipped it instead of just using it. I adopted it as an everyday practice because that is, has become a part of who I am. And, you know, no matter what I identify as or who I am, if people realize that I'm very like kind or if I'm, you know, true to them and I'm showing up as my best self and, you know, holding space for them that is when you see people blossoming. I mean, the people in the front row, I'm watching them, like they've blossomed so much since I've known them and it's only been maybe a few months. And so, you know, just when people feel like someone cares and just listening, that's all that matters. Thank you for that. Uh, so you are the SGA president. I am the SGA president. Yeah, so I'll say it again for the people in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the SGA president. Like that's, that's a pretty big deal. Uh, you know. Does it come with security and I wish, I wish. <laughs> oh, I'm so, gonna have to get on it. <laughs> what, what, what? Um, inspires you to kind of, you know, seek, seek that leadership role, and what do you plan to do with it? Right? Ooh, okay, I'm just getting political. All right. <laughs> um, so <laughs> when I first started at ACC, well, physically, I started in the spring, living away. So I started at ACC in person in the fall of last year, and I got this random email uh, from the SGA advisor, and was like, "We're looking for, you know, positions," and I was like. Well, that's my way to get involved, whatever. And so I was Highland Senator. And if you know me, you see me all the time in my office. Everybody calls it my office, but it's a study room. And I've just been there every day talking to people and trying to build community, right? Because it's middle pandemic. We still have the mass restrictions. You know, people are here, but not really, not really actually on campus. But the people that were here were looking for other people to just talk to. And so then I got nominated to be Senate chair, which is kind of like a part of eBoard. And, you know, I got to be more hands-on with other senators and then I got, you know, nominated to be vice president. And the gag is that I didn't want to be SGA president. Like, I just wanted to stay a VP and keep my vote and all the things. But it just so happened that the president that got elected transferred to UConn. Shout out to Justin Parker. Uh, he was doing some great work. And in our constitution, it says that I'm automatically going to be bumped up. And so here I am, SGA president. And I can't even believe that I'm saying that because we have 71,000 students. That is a lot. That is bigger than UT's undergrad. Um, and so you asked me what I plan to do. The same thing I've always done. These titles don't mean a thing to me. If I wasn't SGA president, I would still be doing the same work, right? Like I'd still be hanging out. I'd still be going to clubs. I had to give up psychology club. I was so sad, but it was something that I knew that psychology club deserved to have a leader that could give them more time than I could because now I'm caring for more students. And so as SGA president, I'm here to, you know, continue doing the same work that I've been doing and also continue to make noise and, you know, ask for changes, right? We have seen what happens when students raise their voices and I'm not going to stop. Well, titles do mean something. I think you are, I appreciate the humanity, but it's a big deal that you are the president. I'm proud of you. <laughs> what what are some um initiatives you hope to take on with with, with your platform mm -hmm. right now we have the housing initiative and so that's really blowing up um that has taken off in a way that i did not expect it to it has just become something that i'm so very proud of and it's not just me it is my peers and all of us have worked so hard on that um and you know outside of housing is just how do we connect the college because everybody in this college is doing the same thing affordability, we're food insecurities, you know, academics, everything. We're all doing the same thing, but we're not talking to each other. And so my other biggest thing is how continue to connect faculty and staff and students because all of us are being affected by this, right? If ACC can't hire new staff, 
we have to continue gerrymandering students to, to Highland to take classes. Well, it just it's just a big circle of things that go on. And so how do we continue to connect the college so that the other person knows what the other person is doing if we're both doing the same thing? We, we had the board of trustees meeting on September 12th and everybody got up there and said the same thing. Well, how do I not know I already know about you already? Like, how did I not know you were already doing that? Let's connect. And so my email box has been insane, but very much for the greater good of the college. And so I've already seen a lot of bridges that have been built. And so today we have our SGA meeting, our first one at four. Y'all roll through if you like, um, and you'll be able to hear some more about the work that we've been doing, because again, it is not K Trent Government Association. It is Student Government Association. And I will never, ever not have them and thank them for all the work that they do too. Where's the meeting? Uh, the meeting is going to be here at Highland in 22220, somewhere in building 1000. Um, I'll be sure to have a sign somewhere. And you can go to see it virtually as well. There's a link that we have for Zoom. So come through if you like. It is open to the public. Everybody can come through and you will see how all the work that we've been doing. Awesome. Awesome. And is that once a month? Once a month? Once a month yes, once a month, uh, because that gives us a time to like compile all the data that we're doing um, and then go to the board of trustees meetings and have conversations with them. And so it just it felt better to have it once a month to, you know, all come together that one time and then just really talk about what we've been doing for the past month. You know, so I'm excited about it. If if I'm a student or or faculty and staff can come through, absolutely, okay. please. We we encourage that. That's highly encouraged. Please come through. How do I get involved if I can't make the meeting? Either virtually or in person. Mm -hmm. Continue to reach out. Um, we SGA is really rebuilding itself right now, and so a lot of the work is getting the website up. And so there, we should be able to post, you know, information about our committee meetings because those are you know, a little bit more intimate. And so just join our committee meetings. If you're not able to come to the General Assembly, uh, get to know who your SGA reps are at your local campuses. Everybody has a senator. There's also senators for certain demographics. So get to know all of those people as you go along, because, you know, it's just not conducive for us to do this alone. And honestly, we can't do this work alone. So please continue to show up for your students. Okay. Thank you. What, so, so you are impact policy. Get to talk to the president. Get to talk to the board of trustees. Mm -hmm. Like for those that may not know what it is, is, it, is that is it is that is that it, or is that more to it, or how would you best describe SGA? When I'm talking, well, SGA in general. So SGA Student Government Association does allow you to be in the spaces and places to talk to admin and to talk to the board of trustees, but it doesn't mean that you have to be an SGA to talk to those people, right? Those board meetings are open to everybody. You can go there at 3 p.m once a month so you can show up and you can stand up there in front of them and talk as well. Um, but the thing about SGA is that that is who they lean on. SGA is the heartbeat of this school. That is how students know about staff and knows what admin is doing. They lean on us for our voices. They will always ask us first. That's why I'm so empowered about people joining SGA. If you wanna make change, you don't have to do a lot. You don't have to contribute all of your time to it. It's not a huge time commitment, but what you bring is very valuable because that one thing could change, make a whole institutional change. Change. And so we need people that are fiery and want to be a part of things, even if they don't feel comfortable talking, right? You can still show up to a meeting and I'll get up there and talk for you. So thank you. I will continue to be loud. Yes, I will, Ebony. Thank you. <laughs> now, we, we will be asking Kay some questions at the end, so you can feel free to drop them in the chat or if you're here with us, just hold on to them and we'll get to you shortly. So you wear a few other hats. Tell us a little bit about those. Which one you want to know about? Uh, <laughs> psychology, psychology club? It's my psychology club is here. Those are my peeps. They're here. Um, what is that? What is what? What is psychology club? So, so, so psychology club is not just open to psychology majors. Uh, we've spent a lot of time. Well, first, we were spending a lot of time to make sure that we could save it, you know, rules and regulations per student life and just making sure that we kind of built up a community and it became less about psychology club and it was more so like, these are people that I love and I lean on. That's my family, right? A lot of us come to, or in, at ACC with chosen family. We don't have necessarily relatives that are our blood here. And so Psychology Club became that that platform where I could just send a discourse, send a text, be like, hey, how you doing? Or like one time I saw Jacob riding his bike on the street. I was like, Jacob, what, what are you doing? Like, just, just, it was just so nice to see that because ACC, Austin in general, is a very community-based place but you have to know where to look to find that community. And so Psychology Club made it open to everybody. And so at one point, our Discord maybe had like 15 people. It's like up to 60 people now. And I think it just everything 
that you do. You just have to make sure again that people know and care about you. Now, Pride Club is my baby this year. Um, it is serving the LGBTQIA plus community, but also allies are very much welcome. ACC only had LGBT equity and it really wasn't student led, staff supported. And so we needed something to get that going. And so we did that. And so this year we'll be able to, you know, have meetings and reach out to people because again, another group of people that just need community and that just really need people to lean on. So a lot of these organizations that go on, they have these requirements or like descriptions of what they are, but really it's all chosen family. Like you spend a lot of time planning out things, you spend time figuring out who your people are and who your members are. But again, it's just having that community, right? Because that's what ACC is about. And so I think every org has its own baseline of just building a great family. Awesome. When does Psychology Club lead it? When does Pride Club? So Psychology Club is not my baby anymore. I had to bring it up. Actually, the president is here. So that is definitely something that Jules can help you out with. Um, and also, so Pride Club, we're still getting together for the meetings and trying to figure out things with people's schedules. So all of that will be posted on Student Life's page where all the clubs and information that when they meet will be on there. But as soon as I know, y'all will know for sure. Okay. Uh, we'll have you do a plug at the end. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. okay. So I so you are extremely involved in the community. Um, tell tell us one one of the ways this helped shape you. Because you know sometimes students think got to go to class, got to take care of business, I got to figure out you know life. Um, what are some of the ways that you being so involved has helped you to be an even I'll start with the basically the way that my life has been, you know, most of us have the same story or like have a story of some kind. Uh, life was not kind to me has, you know, it, it was really big and, you know, had being able to be involved in school when I was, you know, in K through 12 was what kind of saved me. It's kind of what kept me whole, it kind of, you know, gave me something to look forward to. Classroom life, I could not stand. I was not a good student, did not do well. It was just one of those things that I could not stand waking up to do because I was not being supported. But I did look to basketball and volleyball and track and choir and all the other things. And so coming to ACC, you know, sometimes this is people's first stopping point, right? They don't go to UT first, they come here. And so how do we have a life of people that will transfer together to UT? Because once we get there, that life is even more different, but you have somebody else that you already know. And so me being involved really saves me and it fuels me and it drives me. And if I cannot do this work, it, it would break my heart completely. Like I am a public servant by nature. I get it from my grandmother. It's very much inherited. And I, if I couldn't do this work, I don't know what else I would do, to be honest. Any uh, words of what? So faculty and staff have a, you know, you have a large job. We all have a large job. Any words of wisdom from a student's perspective or a student leadership perspective to faculty and staff about, you know, better ways that can support our students? Just listen to us, right? Turn off the things that you think you know about us. To be like most of the staff, I know that they they love us and they hold us and they have all these ideas about what we need. But until you're interacting with us and coming out of your offices to have actual conversations with us and just letting us talk to you, you will not connect to us. I, I'm in the committee meetings with faculty and staff and they're making all these great decisions and having all these awesome conversations about things. That doesn't apply to students now. Like we are post pandemic. We are biologically different. Our brains are just something on, on another level. We are learning how to be human again. So please delete everything that you know about a, a college student, especially a community college student, and come talk to us about what our needs are. You know, I know a lot of people aren't, you know, taking surveys. We're over emails. We're burnt out. We're overstimulated. Come out and just talk to us on our campuses and just meet us where we are. Um, and also, I know a lot of people give us grace in, you know, certain classrooms, and we all have that professor that we look to, but also a lot more grace needs to be given to our students, because I've heard it from this semester. I'm even feeling it myself. It's like, the math not mapping with this semester. Something's up. Like, something's in the air. I don't know if it's a retrograde. I was just talking to Jacob about it. I'm like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. But we're all feeling it. And so that means that staff is feeling it. And that means that admin is feeling it. And that means that the board of trustees is feeling it. So why can't we just have a conversation about that, right? And that's why I love this center, right? Because that is exactly what this is about. And so I challenge staff and, and faculty and even our admin to come continue to talk to us in real time because it's just, it's just one of those things like you don't know us until you actually talk to us and interact with us and, you know, cut it off and turn it on. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so we're going to go to you all, the audience, both online and in person. Um, do you have any questions for this? 
actually. I don't drink coffee. I will have anxiety if I drink coffee. <laughs> I had it. Like, someone bought me one this morning and I took like two sips and I was like, no, absolutely not. I tried. What? So what do you drink? Tea. Tea. I love tea. It's my favorite. Imposter syndrome. So let's let's set the, the online audience may have not heard her. Can you give them the question? So the question that lovely Celia Parker asked, shout out, mm -hmm. uh, it was basically how do I push through when that inner voice is telling me that I don't belong and what do I do in order to push through that? And I hear that every day. I heard that coming in here today. I heard it until somebody hit record on the meeting. Like I am hearing it right now that I don't belong in this space. And that is because of my conditioning, right? We were told, I know for me personally, I've been told to be seen and not heard and to be quiet and be just told to do what I'm supposed to do. And I'm like, eh, no, absolutely not. That's not happening. And this is a part of breaking generational curses. And so the way that I push through is that I have a really deep yoga and meditation practice that I have. And I've had it for many years. It saved my life. Um, and I also just I look to people that really care about me. And I think about all the people that have shown up for me. And I just I lean on that. Right. There's so many things that I could lean on, like the things that I didn't do well at the things that, you know, I haven't gotten to yet, maybe all the possible no's and the denials and the door closes. But when I really look at it, I'm looking at the things that I have done and what I can do and claiming the win win when I get accepted to UT, when I do all the things that I want to do. And so that is what keeps me fueled. And honestly, y'all's faces like just seeing Discord pop up. I get thousands of them a day, but like I like to go through them and see what's happening on campuses and then to just keep myself grounded and hold my boundaries. I will I will not. I will cancel something in a minute if I need a moment. I just have to stay true to who I am. And I'm not going to deny any part of my identity to fit the, the script of somebody or to fit in a box. And so I just have to stay true to who I am and just keep myself ha happy and healthy. Oh, I like that question. Don't make me cry up here. <laughs> so the question was like, how do I, you know, can keep my hope alive and you know how do I push through in spaces when I'm told that I don't belong I it goes back to me thinking of my grandmother who could not say no just took anything she had to move schools to, in order to keep her job you know my grandmother was born in 34 so she got an education degree from Southern University and she literally just could not do anything physically emotionally nothing because she was genuinely happy to have a job and so when I think of her, I always say, like, I'm going to be the one that says no and to push past it. And it's it's scary, right, to do the opposite of what you're told to do and the opposite of what you're taught. That means family doesn't talk to me because I have a lot of relatives that don't. Right. They think I'm nuts to be at, at ACC in general. They think I'm, I'm I'm crazy to put my life on the line, per se, to them because I'm not, you know, barefoot and pregnant and married to a man and all the things that I should be doing. But when I think about it, it's like because I broke away from all of that. I've been happier. My mental health has been great because 12 years ago, okay, couldn't tell me, couldn't get myself out of bed. I was missing classes, just was not in a good space, but I was running away from home because I knew if I didn't, I would not be alive physically. I'm from a town that if you do not get out of it, you are on drugs, you are not doing anything. You're work like everybody knows everybody. So you're not really growing. And so for me, the thing that keeps my hope is that I've already done such great work, continue to do that. And I've seen the results of choosing the opposite of what I'm told to do. And that is what keeps it in perspective for me. And also just hang up quotes. I have a lot of affirmations. I have a lot of things that I tell myself. And, you know, it's just, it's just making sure that I'm pouring into myself before I pour into anybody else, because I can't thrive and I can't pour into anyone if I don't have anything to give. I, you know, I, you, you, Speaking about imposter syndrome, I think that's interesting because when you, when the switch goes on, like you're, you're on. But I mean, I just wanted to say, like, yeah, I felt that at times before. Um, but like, this is like, this is your space. Like, you, you own it in, in every, every area of this college. This isn't, this, this is your college. This is your space. You never feel like an imposter. He's like, this is your institution. And, you know, to like to go off of that, when we had the ACC, the ACC equity meeting, right, and everybody was praising like, Kay, like you did such a great job at the board of trustees meeting. And, and I just could not bring it to myself to go and watch myself. Right. I know this is being recorded. I'm not watching it. Don't want to see myself talk. <laughs> that is one thing that I cannot stand. <laughs> Absolutely not. But it was just like like here's staff and faculty that do not know me, probably have never heard my name before until that very moment and was like. You know what, Kay? You did great. And after that meeting, I just bawled and I cried. And 
it was just this big thing because it felt like for the first time in my life, I had people that supported me, right? We, we navigate so long and we have these survival modes and we do what we have to because we're alone. But truly, if you look out and see, we're really never alone. And that sense of feeling of loneliness, it's not, we're just being with ourselves and what can we do when nothing else seems to be working? And that is a question that I ask myself daily. So I just, again, just very grateful that I have, you know, people like you and everybody here today that just showed up because I'm so grateful. Uh, I believe we have a question from Dr. Keisha Bear. Dr. Bear, are you still there? Dr. B. Yes, yes. I'm going to just say thank <laughs> Double you K, so much. baby. <laughs> Double K. I want to say to all the students in the room, thank you for showing up today. Thank you for bringing your authentic self. Thank Hi. you for being everything that you are. Thank you for coming to ACC. Thank you for making us better. This is what K does for us all day, every day. Show us how we can show up and show us how we can be better. I'm absolutely proud and love everybody in that room. I just wanted to say, K, do your thing. Second thing is, What's the best thing that you have learned at ACC? Ooh, I'm going to be real. Can I be real for a second? All right. Everybody like, please, please do it. <laughs> uh, the, the best thing that I've learned at ACC is that you can come to them with a problem, but you better have a solution and you better come with some data and facts that they can go off of, right? Because there are so many people here and they hear about so many things. If you're going to raise an issue, you better come with some facts. And so again, that doesn't discourage people from wanting to make change, but just know that you got to come crossing the T's and dying the I's if you want to come through with it. And so that's kind of a K Trent, like, you know, superpower that I have. It's like, cool, I got to answer for this. But that's also the psychology major. I got this and I'm going to answer all your questions. And I already know what you're about to ask. Now, again, that's the law. Like all the things that I want to do just comes full circle. And I utilize all of those skills that I have. And so just making sure that you're coming through with all of the things that you have and making sure that you're continuing to research and look for things. But on a flip note, um, uh, on a positive that I, I would love to leave y'all with is just don't stop trying, you know, like the, the semester is very different. <laughs> it feels different in every aspect. And even when you hit a bump in the road or your mental's off, like you have support and continue to reach out, be vulnerable. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, that's, and don't be afraid to say that you don't know. That's a sign of wisdom. I got that from my mentor, Dr. B. Um, and she has to remind me of that all the time that it's okay to ask for help and to say, I don't know. And I'll get back to you about it. Uh, do we have any other questions from our online audience? I'll give you a moment to think about it. So so you're leaving us in the spring. Like, what's the next chapter look like for you? Don't make me cry. I'm already, like, thinking about it. Ugh. Um. So legacy, I feel like I already have one. Like, you know, like, it's it's one of those things where even if my name wasn't on it, I could see it in the people, right? And I think my legacy are the students that may not be graduating this or the semester that I'm graduating or the people that transfer to UT or, you know, maybe only only here for a semester, they remember, you know, me as, as an interaction. But I think the biggest thing is just all of the, like the kindness that I've shared, right? You see me in the hallway, I'm smiling at you, waving real big, just, just basic little human, in like instances that go on that is what people will remember right they'll remember all the bad stuff and all the things and all how wild I was and raw and like all the stuff that I said and my attitude and my demeanor and you know okay don't care okay's gonna da, da, da. but at the end of it it's Kay actually cared about people Kay wanted to make change and even if I failed at that I still tried and that's all I that's all I can do because showing up that's the first step to anything what's your dream job in five years to not be working. I don't want to work in five years. Um, but if I had to say, I'd be at a firm somewhere, you know, fresh out of law school. Um, you know, I'm not sure what kind of lawyer I want to be yet. Maybe civil rights. I've been looking into it. Um, but if I had to work at a firm that was flexible, because I want to travel and still have a life and have a family and you know, I don't, I don't want to be building someone else's dream for the rest of my life, but that's a conversation for another day. Okay. okay okay questions from our audience here yes ma'am thank you so much and when i was up there i'm gonna tell you all what i was thinking i'm like this is one shot this is the first time that something like this has gotten to the board like so what's gonna happen like let me make like 
this your shot, K. Like I was in there like coaching myself. All right, next question. But I automatically had to be thinking about what they were going to say next because I already knew. But fun fact, I already knew them because I did a conference with them this summer. So that's kind of why we have that rapport. And I spoke at their board of trustees conference and we got a chance to like actually meet. But also they're going to challenge me to be better and be thinking about things from a different perspective. And so I'm grateful for the board and ACC in general. It's like, I don't necessarily think that everybody will have the Katrin experience, but if they can get a fraction of that, I've done my job well. How do, how do how does a student reach you if they need to connect with you, ask you a question, express a concern? Uh, my email. Uh, I'm not sure if someone can type it in the chat for me. Th thank you, thank you. It'll be in the chat. Please email me anytime. Even if you just have something to say, you want to vent. It doesn't matter. I'm here to hold space for you. And I'm not as can on campus as much as I used to be because uh, I can't get a lot done because I know so many people now, but. Uh, when I am here, I'll definitely be floating around, typically on Wednesdays, and make sure to come find me. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah. I don't know if I'll be in the office. That's too acceptable, but I'll, <laughs> I'll be floating around somewhere. <laughs> it really does feel like your office. I see you there all the time. I asked Dr. Kenny, could he make it put my name on it? They yeah. was like, graduate first. I was like, oh, <laughs> fine, That's fine. Good. That's good. That's good. Do you want to do a plug for the psychology club? Oh, okay. All right. So, when do you all meet? Do you when do you meet? Are you you're still working through it? Okay. All right. Well, they'll they'll let us know. But contact Kay and, and she'll connect you to psychology yes, club. I will. Yeah. Thank you. I think it deserves recognition that though I know you personally, I didn't always right, and the, most of the people in the room didn't. We all came in seeing you, but not knowing you, but experiencing you. So, I think it goes to be said that you. As someone I identify with in a lot of ways, we are from the same state, of course. It is something to be said to see how you flourished. I know what it is to be from that state, though we're on different ends of the state. I know what it is to be a Black woman. I know what it is to be different. I know what it is to be told that you cannot, you will not, you should not do these things, right? But to see someone unapologetically claiming certain things, living in a space successfully is important, right, to me, right? You're going to make me cry. Oh, no. And I don't cry, but I think, I don't know that you know what that means to everybody else. I don't think that you know how important that is. I don't think that you know what we get from that. And I think you need to hear that and you don't need to hear it just in personal spaces, but in public spaces, you mean a lot, you mean a great deal to somebody who has known you for a short amount of time, but I feel like I've known you my entire life, right? So I need to tell you that right in front of other people. I need you to know that I need you to stand on that because I will stand on your shoulders, right? I'm successful because of things that you did. I've learned so much from you and I will continue to. And I think I need you to hear that and I need you to take that to heart, right? I care about you and I love you. And I know that you from this moment and every moment forward, you will be great and you will be something. So it is when you are successful, when you are a lawyer, when you do these things, when you get to these heights and I'm going to be there along the way. And some of these people in this room will be, too. But you need to hear that in a public space and you need to hear it loudly. And I want that to ring through your mind that no matter how bad life was to you, then you've grown from that. Right. I know what that is and I know how difficult that is. And I just want you to know that. And I don't want this conversation to be closed without you knowing what we all see. Cause I think I can speak for everybody in this room, whether this is their first interaction or not, there is something very great about you. There is a light and it shines, right? Despite whoever wants to dim it. So I think I just want you to know that, to accept that, to walk in that moment because this is your moment. The spotlight is on you, right? I need you to do the show. How dare you make me cry in front of all these people? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for that. <laughs> oh. But you're right, I don't hear it often, right? Because, you know, people see me and they're like, oh, she got it all together. She's good. Like, she's good. She's good. But like, just to hear that someone tells you you're proud, like, wow, thank you. Like, I need that sometimes because I'll just go to the next thing, right? That's our survival mode. We'll just, I got to keep going no matter what I do, right? Celia so just graduated. She still doesn't, in her mind, thinks that she has a degree. I'm like, girl, you got a degree. You got a degree. You got a degree. We have to remind each other that we are doing these great things. And so to hear it in public spaces, like you just said, 
it just really, really makes my heart like just pour with open with gratitude. And so I thank you, my sister, for the words that you just said to me. And are we not going to do another crime match today? But <laughs> but I appreciate you and everybody that showed up. Yes, K needs a clean next. Y'all done saw me cry. It won't be the first time, but I appreciate everybody that showed up on Zoom and taking time to, you know, just be here, even if your camera's off. I love you. I love y'all. I love everybody. And thank you for letting me be here. All right. So, yeah, that was that. You changed lives. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ms. K, for being with us today, agreeing to do this conversation and the work you're doing in at ACC and in the community and in the state. Just all the amazing things you're doing now and I know that you're doing in the future. Um, you have a friend in us. There's a new weapon. Be of any support, as we just. Um, thank you to you all for joining us, whether you are online or in, in the space. Um, space is for you. We're going to have a speaker once a month. Um, so just, yeah, come to our webpage, um, reach out to us. We just a space for you all. We'll be doing some great things this year. Um, thank you to our team. I know Jason's one of your mentors. He couldn't make the event, but um, he helped, uh, helped us make the connection for this program. Thank you, Jason. Uh, Jessica, uh, Jazz and Jessica and Safira are part of our team are here to help make this possible. Jay's back there um, behind the scenes. Um, he, but yeah, thank you for everyone that makes all this work possible, Ms. Loretta, um, and for you all. And we will see you next month, not before. We have some exciting things coming next month. And this is recorded, so if you have any peers that couldn't make it, just tell them to reach out. We'll have the link for them pretty soon so we can share this. Um, but have a great day, great week, great semester. We appreciate you.